Yudashimase, everybody. Welcome to the store. That's what Yudashimase means in Japan. I am Andres Salazar. Bienvenidos. I'm here at the headquarters in Ventura, California, the Art of Comics, where we talk about graphic novels, comics, illustration, fine art, storytelling, the art of comics, the business of telling stories and doing art. And uh, I do that stuff. So check out my patrons. Check out my web comic I'm doing called Weekend Warriors. That stuff's actually free. And then you can see behind a one dollar a month paywall all the other like work, graphic novel work that I do. I have a show coming up next week. Opening reception is May the third, and. All the weekends in May, it'll be there. I'll be there. Come check out my work. Check out my website to see the paintings that'll be there. Um, Heavy Metal magazine started in the late 70s, mainly featuring European artists. In fact, Metal Herlant uh, was the magazine that kind of converted uh, here in the States and it took off right 77 78 79 80 81 and it's got all the classics it has you know all the the big names of european comics we're talking manera mila manara we've got uh john gerard you know mobius uh drew lay ikibial uh, uh Sergio Topi, like all those big names, right? And European artists. A couple Americans too, like Corbin, things like that. So Marvel Comics said, you know what? We see you heavy metal. We're going to do the same type of deal. We're going to have our magazine, our adult um, fantasy magazine. So it's in the magazine format, so you don't have to worry about the, the code. So no censors, you don't have to worry about mad parents, you know, coming and ruining your business. We're going to do what you're doing and make adult fantasy stories. Uh, and, just, and just let me say right now, Epics and Eclipse, Eclipse is another magazine format that did something similar. These Epics are not as good as Heavy Metal. They're just not. And I think it's because the level, the quality level of of work i mean heavy metal was pulling from literally the some of the best in the world that stuff was just firing on all cylinders this feels like someone trying to emulate that but just didn't have the raw talent behind it and so that's just my like top level thought this is june of 81 so this is the first year 81 is when they started this and this is the sixth issue so give it some time i think once we i got a stack of these once we get into like 85 i think it starts getting better but i think these first issues are kind of rocky they just don't have the the stories that i think are the best um but you know later on you get chaken you got john bolton you got some people that are really good who um who maybe bring it up bring it up a little bit to a higher level that said I love this cover. I had no idea who did it until I like I couldn't read this right, and then I saw it's it's Neil Adams. Neil Adams, most only most you know, renowned for like Batman, Green Arrow, that kind of stuff. He's doing here some beautiful illustration, and I love. I didn't. Really, I don't think I've ever seen his painted work, but this painting stuff is great. It's kind of like when Howard used to do. When he did started uh, Cody Starbuck and he did these um, the painted work, I thought I always thought and I told him I said I, th I think your painted stuff is so much better. But he was like, well, it just takes so much more time to do. It's not it's not worth the effort, I guess, in some ways. But um, I thought this was really cool. Big fan. So yeah let's check it out we've got harlan ellison uh blythe hutch is in here too i'm not a huge fan of his this i don't know who does that this image 
but it reminds me a little bit of like Bob Peak. Um, I have yet to see this movie actually, Excalibur. I really want to see it. I've never seen it. This does have a bit of a Bob Peak kind of did these like airbrush lines, like speed lines with airbrush. Uh, and just I don't know, for some reason it reminds me of that, but it also looks a little not as quite as developed as Bob Peak. So if it is Bob's work, it's like kind of a rush job. Or it's just somebody who's trying to be like them. Okay, top secret, uh, TSR game, role playing. Never played it. Love, love to play. I'd love to play Top Secret, Boot Hill, some of those older TSR games. Uh, of course, I've played Star Frontiers and D and D. Those are the ones. Okay, let's get on. Teach and Chong, nice dreams. That's a classic. I haven't seen this in forever. Don't know why Stacy Stacy Keach is highlighted here, Sergeant Schrader. It was Stacy Keach. I should know who that is. I'm assuming. Sounds super familiar. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Dude. I remember when they were bringing in these like metal cassettes. They were like, oh yeah, the, the metal. The tape, I don't know if it's the tape is metal or I don't know why the metal, but somehow it's supposed to be like higher technology, more fidelity type thing. I still have a double tape cassette player and it's pretty badass. This little game view, he talks about D&D, a lot of talk about role playing games. So um, fantasy, things like that, you know we're and it actually leads into this which is kind of this like game kind of story um fantasy is becoming super popular now in the 80s this is 81 so this is right when fantasy is becoming like super popular in books and comics and in movies a lot of like these fantasy movies are coming out it's becoming super Super popular. D and D is part of that, um, and you know we'll see, especially later on towards the late eighties and nineties, D and D really is taken off big time. Okay, here's a story by uh, Mike Sants and Roy Kennard, and uh, let's take a look at it. I like the airbrush. It's kind of a fun. Um, it's almost like a MMO. ORPG or like a, a mud type of thing where they're kind of these two players combatant players kind of like talking gaming each other and we don't realize that uh, there's more to this story and they're kind of observing there's going to be some combat I like man this it really is nice I don't quite understand what all this is here. It's not super clear. But I do like this a lot. Also, you might notice the paper stock is changing in this magazine. That was probably another thing. I'm assuming like cost savings issue where the paper quality, this is like nice gloss and this is kind of a duller, a duller paper. The gloss is, is actually better, but Hardest young camera, probably. This is really nice, nice done. I've never really drawn this kind of like high tech sci fi stuff, 2001 style stuff. Um, I really like it though. I just think about effort, but again, kind of like what Howard was saying like, when the effort is so much, I just like, what's out? This is cool. I like the sound effects. This is acrylics. Looks like some acrylic paint. This is cool. And then I, I like this. I like the way this is um, this is done. It's kind of shadows and red. Looks cool. And it's an airbrush. Yeah, and that's cool. I like the art. So there's this like we're following this little action story, but the dialogue are these two guys that it keep like going back and forth and what we realize is that um they're playing these people and we're kind of watching like a role-playing game 
And at the end, what they thought was a game is actually kind of real, and then they're getting they're gonna get killed because of it. It's a cool, cool little twist at the end. I like that. This by Bob Ad Alul. Oh. And uh I like the line work. I'm not too crazy about the colors and such, but I really like this I like these little little vehicles and stuff. Kind of more lighthearted story. This I feel is both of these actually do feel pretty good quality as far as like you know, I would you could see this in a heavy metal and and, and everything. It again it's good. It just it's not bringing those like super high quality names, you know, and, and well known established people. It'd be interesting to to see like the finance the sales numbers. Like how well did this sell? June 81 compared to Heavy Metal's June 81, right? I would be curious to see, like, is it, like, completely, completely different? Or are they close to each other? I don't know. That would be an interesting idea. Okay, next one is Bug, li Bug Lives. And Bug Lives, or Lives, I don't know, like, actually, I don't know which one it is. <laughs> um... Prose piece, so with some illustrated elements. And I'll have to say right off the bat, this is really cool. I love the colors. I love these layers of, of textures and things here in these gloves. I love the pattern. Pattern is very important. That's something that I've not really been doing in my work is putting pattern in there. I need to. That's important. Um... I've just been doing blocks of colors, but pattern is, is a nice way to create, in, create interest. The glasses, those horned, these like long horn glasses, just a creative idea. This background with this like Ferris wheel and stuff and, and like um, carnival. This is a really, really nice, nice painting. This is cool too. Yeah. Who's the artist? Who did we say this was? This was Phoebe Berry. Phoebe Berry. She's it sounds like a woman's name. It's pretty cool, man. We re reused it, but that's okay. It's really good. Okay, here's Life Hutch. That was a quick story. Oh, it's gonna continue. Um Harlan Ellison. I don't really know much about Harlan's work other than he was, you know, prolific in at this era. He's well regarded as one of those mavericks, if you will, of science fiction and personalities. A lot of people like him. There's some people that could do without him, I think. Um, I know he did some Star Trek. I mean, he's, he's done a bunch of everything, but he's uh, he's one of those guys. So he wrote the short story, and uh, actually he wrote the story back in 56. So um, that's interesting, yeah. So this is an old story that they kind of re-put in here. Um, and then they got this guy, Ken Stacy, to uh, illustrate it, and this is really cool. I like this a lot, that's really neat. Great vehicle. Cool stuff. I haven't read this story actually, so apologies. I can't give you much about it. I'll just thumb through here for a sec. These are nice illustrations, though. I do like it. It's it's enough to where it's almost like a comic, right? I mean, we really are doing we are doing storytelling with these panels, so it's very pseudo comicy, sequential art, you know. 
with just larger, you know, um, narration boxes. They're just big. That was cool. Okay. Jim Starlin. Let me tell you a couple of thoughts I have about Jim Starlin. I like his stuff. He's going into this more metaphysical area. Um, more stuff that he's probably interested in. I like his color theory. I like the way he puts things down. It's esoteric, magical, supernatural, sci-fi stuff. It's very philosophical. It's kind of heady. I really love the textures. and I mean, I think it's very cool, man. I think Jim Starling was doing some really cool things. And he does. he's not shackled by Marvel or DC here. He's able to just really invent something. But all these cool effects. Like, he's got really cool effects. He's got these really neat backgrounds that I really like here. So, ultimately, it's just very... To me, it's very impressive. I I really like it. As for the story itself about this, like, you know, universal emperor type of guy who's, you know, summoning a deity to get guidance on what he should do. Should he destroy or... or keep the peace in these universes um it's kind of hard to know but but um i like it i like this i like these paint strokes he's doing and i like the idea of it and i like these i mean these it's really well done i mean this is to me what comics is about is like pushing ideas and really going for it it almost feels like a alan moore type of thing story-wise um kind of this philosophical question uh, but yeah I dig it and it's not the end so there, there'll be more in this metamorphosis odyssey but yeah kind of cool I like I like people ooh shoot just broke off I like people branching out uh, next orbit here's another this is stories by Jim uh, Gene Bello and that name sounds familiar while I'm looking at this, I wonder if this person's not worked in heavy metal. But this reminds me a lot of European comics. Uh, the line work, the types of uh, hatching, creating kind of volume. This looks, this reminiscent of a lot of different European artists. And uh, I appreciate it. Really like the colors. Again, it's these like really fun, exciting, new ways to illustrate and draw to me are really cool. I think if you want to be an artist, you got to study it. Very cool. Book review. Yeah, not too much about. Oh, what is this? Let's see what the back. Cerebus. He talks about Cerebus. Huh. Okay, we're back to that one story by uh, Ellison. Life Hutch. I think if these were colored, I probably would be more engaged with it, but because they feel like they were colored, and I feel like it ha it's only black and white because of the cost cost savings, which is unfortunate. But this stuff is a comic. Look at this. I mean, don't you see a comic here? This is a comic book right here. This is so it's this kind of interesting hybrid of prose story with that. Okay, uh, Mark Bright and Roger McKenzie. I think these are, this is the guy that does the one in Heavy Metal, I think. So I think he's doing it both. And I'm not a huge fan of his work. Um, I can't point to it other than just say style, I guess, which is a lame word to use, but I'm just, I'm not connecting with the art as much. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry, dude. More of life hutch. So I got big long I might have to go back and read this just to see what's up with it. I always say that. I never do you guys. I never do. Probably should. Um Oh, Bissett. We know Bissett. Steve Bissett. 
That's really cool. It's really well well done. Yeah, this is all very well done. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, bloody. Very well done. Slightly. I bet this would be really good in color, to be honest. Again. The black and white's killing me sometimes. And I'm not a snob about it. I just feel like... Here's another one. This is by Rick, uh, Rick Veach. You got Steam Bissett. You got Rick Veach. is the whole uh, Swamp Thing group. Very short story, but really well done. Oh, my gosh. This is just so cool to look at. I love the spaceship specifically. And these faces. So it's, I mean, this is really trippy stuff here. It's good though. Very good. Um, there you go. So that was issue with some Yukon Jack. Um, there you go. Outland, the movie. Epic. Maybe not as good as Heavy Metal, but that actually wasn't bad at all. That wasn't bad. So um, there you go. More to come shortly. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Bye.